Welcome to the Friday edition of Tech Stocks Daily. Get ready for a roller coaster of market moves. Today we dive into Intuit's surprising stock dip despite stellar earnings and what it means for future growth. We'll uncover CrowdStrike's mixed bag ahead of its Q2 results. Hint, it's not all rosy. Avid Exchange faces legal storms but keeps its chin up at major investor conferences. Finally, we'll revel in Workday's soaring shares amid impressive Q2 performance and hot future prospects. Stay tuned, it's tech, it's stocks, and it's the perfect way to wrap up your week. Hey there, tech enthusiasts, buckle up, because today we're diving into the roller coaster ride that is Intuit's recent performance on the NASDAQ. For those of you living under a rock, Intuit is the tech giant best known for bringing you financial tools like TurboTax, QuickBooks, and Credit Karma. So what's going on in their world? Well, a lot. First off, Intuit stock took a bit of a tumble today, dropping about 777%, bringing the share price down to 630 and 62. But why the dip, you ask, especially after such seemingly solid news? Let's start with the earnings. Intuit released its Q4 financial results, which were pretty impressive. They reported a quarterly revenue of 3.18 billion, beating analyst estimates of 3.8 billion. Their adjusted earnings per share came in at 1 in 99, again surpassing the analyst projections of 184. So far, so good, right? Well, here's where it gets intriguing. Despite these robust numbers, the stock fell. One likely culprit is their forward guidance for the fiscal year 2025. Management lowered their long-term growth outlook from 8 to 12% to 6 to 10%. Talk about a mood killer. This guidance may have tempered investor enthusiasm, despite the smashing current results. Analyst reactions were mixed, but generally positive. Analysts like Brad Sills from Bank of Montreal reiterated a buy rating, upping the price target from $730 to $780. He noted that the company's small business growth exceeded expectations, and that their AI investments, like the new Gen AI tool Intuit Assist, hold promising potential for future gains. On the other hand, there were voices like Mark Murphy, who maintained a neutral gallon stance while marginally increasing the price target from $585 to $600, pointing out areas like the unexplained degradation in free cash flow margin as worth watching. Another interesting tidbit is the new $3 billion stock repurchase authorization. Share buybacks can often be a sign of a company's confidence in its future prospects and a way to return value to shareholders. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Let's also break down some of those sector performances. Intuit's small business and self-employed group revenues shot up by 20%, hitting $2.55 billion. Credit Karma is also doing some serious lifting, with its revenue climbing 14% to $485 million. However, there's a bit of a fly in the ointment as the consumer group revenue tumbled by 12% to $113 million. Additionally, as we look ahead to fiscal Q1 2025, the company's guidance on EPS of 233 to 238 cent fell short of analyst expectations of 279 per share. This might explain why the stock saw some immediate retreat. To wrap it up, Intuit is a fascinating case of a strong quarterly performance overshadowed by cautious future guidance, which keeps investors on their toes. Despite short-term dips, their long-term prospects powered by AI and robust growth in various business segments might still keep the bulls interested. So, if you're thinking about betting on Intuit, you'll definitely want to keep tabs on how they navigate these waters going forward. That's the lowdown on Intuit for today. Stay tuned for more tech tidbits tomorrow. Hold on to your firewalls, folks, because CrowdStrike has been stealing today's tech spotlight and not always for the best reasons. So let's break it down. CrowdStrike, the cybersecurity juggernaut, is set to release its second quarter fiscal 2025 results on June 4th. And naturally, Wall Street is buzzing with questions. Is it time to buy, sell, or hold this stock? With a projected revenue estimate hitting around $958.7 million, a whopping 31% increase from last year, things might look sunny at first glance. Oh, and don't forget the expected non-GAAP earnings between $0.98 and $0.99 cents per share, which is about 32.4% higher year over year. Not too shabby, right? But here's where it gets dicey. Despite those impressive figures, CrowdStrike's ride hasn't been smooth. They faced rising expenses in sales, marketing, and R&D, not to mention an incredibly tricky IT outage back in July 2024. This mess-up stemmed from a faulty Falcon platform content update, which affected around 8.5 million Microsoft Windows devices across tons of industries. Think banks, hospitals, and even airports. They managed to contain the fallout, but let's be real, it doesn't do wonders for customer trust or market reputation. This bumpy ride has somewhat mirrored their stock performance. As of today, CrowdStrike has only managed a modest 4.8% YTD increase. Kind of meh compared to the Zach's internet software industry's 14.6% jump. And if we look to their peers, Palo Alto Networks and Fortinet have had stellar rises, clocking 18.5% and 27.2% respectively. But wait, there's more. This brings us to the million dollar question. Is CrowdStrike overvalued? The stock is trading at eye-watering levels, 14.47 times its forward 12-month PS ratio, compared to an industry average of just 2.57. Yikes. And if you're thinking, well, high growth justifies high valuations, things aren't all rosy on the growth front either. CrowdStrike's revenue growth has decelerated from a scorchingly rapid 50% year-over-year till fiscal 2023 
to just 36% in fiscal 2024. Projections for the next couple of years suggest it'll cool off even more, landing somewhere around 30% and 24%. Adding petrol to the fire sale are macroeconomic uncertainties and geopolitical woes that have caused companies to push the pause button on IT spending, reflecting badly on CrowdStrike's near-term prospects. To top it all off, today's Intel has a prevailing sentiment that CrowdStrike might be on shaky ground going into their Q2 earnings announcement. The advice footed around town is leaning towards stay away for now, largely due to the dubious combo of operational hiccups and a sky-high valuation. So what's the bottom line? While CrowdStrike has a bounce-back potential given its significant market share and a wide client base deeply integrated with its cybersecurity solutions, it's facing stiff competition and challenges that make investors a tad queasy. The next week's earnings report will be a defining moment, providing insights that could sway investor sentiment positively or, well, otherwise. As always, stay tuned, stay informed, and may your cybersecurity be always robust. Hold on to your portfolios, tech enthusiasts, because Avid Exchange Holdings was all over the news today, and we've got a buffet of juicy stories to dive into. If you've got a stake in Avid Exchange or are just a fan of AP automation and fintech drama, then you'll want to listen up. First on the docket, we've got some legal thunderclouds hovering over Avid Exchange. The heavyweight law firm Kessler Topaz Meltzer & Check LLP has thrown a spotlight on potential violations of federal securities laws by Avid Exchange Holdings, Inc. We're talking about a company that went public back in October 2021, pricing their shares at $20 each. Fast forward to July 31st, 2024, and the company reported some rather underwhelming financial results for Q2. Revenue came in at $105.13 million, missing estimates by $1.75 million, and they had to revise their full-year revenue guidance downwards. Investors were not pleased, and the stock price took a nosedive of nearly 30%, closing at $8.94 per share. Now, if you're an Avid Exchange investor who's feeling the sting in your wallet, Kessler Topaz Meltzer & Check would love to hear from you. They're currently investigating these financial shenanigans, and might just be your knight in shining armor promising to get you some of that green back. This law firm has a history of tackling securities fraud, and has recovered billions on behalf of investors worldwide. Want in? Head over to kdmc.com, or shoot them an email to find out more. But wait, the drama doesn't end there. Despite this stormy forecast, Avid Exchange isn't backing down. They're keeping their game face on and participating in a series of high-profile investor conferences. Company execs will be speaking at both the Piper Sandler Growth Frontiers Conference and the illustrious Goldman Sachs Communicopia Plus Technology Conference. If you haven't yet heard of these conferences, just know that they're kind of a big deal. Think of them as the Oscars of the investment world. For all you fintech aficionados who can't attend in person, worry not. Avid Exchange is live streaming these presentations on their investor relations website, with replays available for your binging pleasure. At these events, you can expect Avid Exchange to talk up their AP automation software and payment solutions that make life easier for middle market businesses and their suppliers. Despite the rocky financial results, Avid Exchange continues to push forward with their mission to digitize and automate accounts payable workflows. Over 8,000 businesses already use their services, and they've got a vast network paying upwards of 1.2 million supplier customers. They're pitching a dream where manual invoicing is about as relevant as dial-up internet, replacing it with sleek, seamless digital payments. So keep your eyes peeled and your notifications on because whether it's legal escapades or industry showcases, Avid Exchange is not a company to be ignored right now. Hey tech enthusiasts, today we're diving deep into why Workday is making waves on the NASDAQ and getting a whole lot of investor love. Buckle up because this story is packed with impressive numbers, exciting new plans, and a whole lot of bullish feels around this business management software company. First off, Workday shares are soaring, up nearly 12% by midday trading. So what's causing this spike? It's all thanks to their stronger than expected second quarter results. The company transformed $2.9 billion in revenue into a non-GAAP operating income of $1.75 per share. That's not only a significant bump from last year's $1.43 per share, but also a generous leap over analyst estimates of $1.64 per share. What's driving this? Strong revenue growth and an aggressive stock buyback plan supported by wider profit margins. Basically, Workday's got game, and investors are loving it. But there's more. Analysts are touting this quarter as a turning point for Workday. They're seeing this quarter as a sign of balanced growth ahead. Analyst Brad Sills has even raised his price target from $265 to a cool $310, stating that Workday is demonstrating some serious scale potential thanks to their extensible applications, killer development platform, and top-tier distribution channel in the ERP category. Sills predicts mid-teens top-line growth, which might not sound groundbreaking, but in the general ERP industry, it's stellar. What's impressive is Workday's meticulous balancing act. They're shifting focus to profitability while still ensuring growth. By 2027, those operating profit margins are projected to jump to 30%, up from the current 25%. And this isn't just good news on paper. Workday closed this quarter with a whopping 20.9% increase year-over-year in their total subscription revenue backlog, amounting to $21.58 billion. 
Cash flows are also strong, with $516 million in free cash flow for the quarter and $7.37 billion in cash and marketable securities. Talk about a financial flex. And how's this for an encore? Management has just outlined plans for their third quarter subscription revenue to be around $1.955 billion, highlighting an impressive 16% growth expectation. Plus, the company's full-year revenue projection ranges from $7.7 billion to $7.725 billion. This long-term outlook and strategic profitability focus are clearly keeping the investor interest peaked. But let's hear it from you, our awesome community. What are your thoughts on Workday's performance this quarter? Are you feeling bullish or a bit cautious about diving in? Do you agree with the analyst's positive outlook or do you see some cautionary flags? Drop your thoughts, comments, and analysis below. We love hearing your takes and insights. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on your daily dose of tech news. Keep those comments and discussions rolling. We can't wait to see what you have to say. All right, tech enthusiasts, let's hone in on one of the hot stocks in today's reporting. Into it. Now the question on everyone's mind, should you buy, sell, or hold given today's news? Let's dive in. Intuit had a bit of a wild ride with its stock dipping 7.77% to $630.62 today. On the surface, their Q4 financial results were sizzling hot. They beat earnings estimates, reporting a quarterly revenue of $3.18 billion and adjusted earnings per share of $1.99. Yet despite these shiny numbers, the stock plunged. What's going on? The dip can be chalked up to a classic case of forward guidance blues. Management revised their long-term growth outlook downward from 8 to 12% to 6 to 10%. This caution threw some cold water on investor enthusiasm, despite the super solid current results. Kind of like seeing an amazing movie, only to hear the sequel might just be meh. But here's what I find promising. Analysts largely remain optimistic. Brad Sills of Bank of Montreal hiked his price target from $730 to $780, buoyed by Intuit's robust small business growth and promising AI ventures like the new Gen AI tool, Intuit Assist. Analysts are recognizing the massive potential in these areas, and AI's significant role in future gains is not to be overlooked. Share buybacks of $3 billion also signal the company's confidence. Given this backdrop, I'd peg into it as a hold right now. They've beat current expectations, but prudent growth caution has left a question mark for some investors. If you already have skin in the game, the fundamentals are solid enough for a hold until there's more clarity. Their ventures into AI and stellar small business performance could mark better prospects ahead. However, always do your own homework, folks. Dig into those financial reports, consider your personal investment strategy, and maybe a visit to your financial advisor wouldn't hurt. Investing isn't one size fits all, so make sure it's the right fit for you. So there you have it, into it. Potentially not a binary buy or sell today, but worth holding on to while watching how things play out in the AI space and their small business segment growth. Keep those discussions rolling. And as always, may your investments be as smart as your tech savvy. Hey tech enthusiasts, what a whirlwind of a day on the NASDAQ. We saw Intuit having a bit of a rocky path despite solid earnings. CrowdStrike dealing with some turbulence ahead of their upcoming Q2 results. Avid Exchange under legal scrutiny, but keeping their head high in investor conferences, and Workday basking in the limelight with stellar earnings and strong future prospects. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe for more tech updates, and share this video with fellow tech fans. Return on Monday for another action-packed update. Have an amazing weekend, and stay tech-savvy.